My name is Evan Urban. I'm a solution engineer on the high frequency global technical team. And today I'll be going over scripting capabilities in FICO and automating repetitive tests. As an overview, I'll be going over uh, Lua scripting and API. I'll be discussing the record macro feature, uh, specifically going through a half wavelength dipole with an obstacle. I'll be then talking about uh, Lua API and Compose. So taking the Lua script from our record macro and uh, importing it at, into Compose to modify. And then uh, going over the automation features of scripting, uh, specifically with the uh, dipole antenna array uh, using uh, FICO's um, uh, application macro for antenna array scripts. Lua scripting is fully integrated in both CAD FICO and post FICO. Uh, so it automates repetitive and complex tasks. Uh, so uh, automation uh, scripts utilize the Lua API in order to control different uh, FICO applications, FICO applications, and uh, can be used to perform these repetitive complex tasks with less human interaction. So some tasks can possibly be performed faster than when done by hand and also possibly more reliable. Um, and also we have a uh, record macro feature, which uh, allows you to uh, s generate a script based off of uh, manually performing certain actions and then this script can be saved and run as is or it can be extended and uh, modified to have more custom workflows or to do more uh, complicated things so. so going over the record macro feature so what i've done is i click the mac record macro button i've defined my variables for my uh, model um, i'm shown in the bottom left created the half wavelength dipole and a PEC box to serve as the obstacle nearby the dipole. And then I defined a, a port and voltage source on the dipole itself, and then made my current and my current and 3D far field requests. And once when that was done, I clicked the record macro button again, and this generated the Lua script uh, for me uh, that I could then further run or modify. Here's the first portion of the Lua script that was generated by that record macro feature. And here's just a list of the variables that was added. So you can see um, closer to the top, we have frequency. So what this is, is it uh, we get the default properties of the variable. We can assign it uh, different uh, things like the expression for the variable. So in this case, one gigahertz, you can give it a label. So I, I labeled it FREQ or free for frequency. And then, uh, you, you set those properties for the variable itself. And we also have now an internal uh, uh, data for frequency that we can call later and modify later in the code as well. And so here's frequency, the wavelength, and also the different box dimensions too, dimensions too. The next portion of the script is the, uh, the geometry that's created. So at the top, we have that add line. So this is where we, or I created the, uh, the dipole. So the start point n vector is negative lambda divided by four, and the end point n vector is lambda divided by four. And so you could also modify or change which work plane that this dipole is stationed in. I just have it in the XY work plane right now, but you can uh, define it to, if you created your own work plane, you can define it here. And uh, again, you can give it a label and, and so on for, for that uh, geometry. And also at the very bottom, that's where the cuboid geometry is defined with the different box variables there. Um, also in the middle, you can see the view uh, zoom to extents, so you can actually change what the view is when you run this code, and you, what the what the view is in the GUI itself in FICO. So uh, right now it's just zoom to extents, but you could change that to whatever you'd like. And then next, uh, this kind of goes back to what I mentioned before. We created a variable lambda, but here we're getting that that lambda properties back. And we're redefining the expression because the model was created in centimeters. So we need to redefine wavelength instead of uh, in meters to centimeters. And then we, we set the properties once again. This last portion of the record macro code, uh, at the top we defined our wire port right on the, the wire that was created for the dipole. We then add a voltage source to that wire port and then create our far field and current requests. So our far field goes from zero to 180 in theta, and then zero to 360 for phi in five degree increments. With the Lua script generated from the record macro feature in FICO, uh, we could actually also open it up into Compose and modify the, the Lua script 
here and compose and here and compose and uh, we can also we can then generate an OML script which will be able to run this Lua script uh, in, in FICO in the background so without actually having to open up the FICO software itself. So here we're going to add new lines of code to the script in order to add an additional configuration to uh, include the in the simulation of plane wave excitation. So here at the top of the script, uh, have two lines of code that sets both the sources and loads to uh, per configuration. So that allows us to have one configuration that has the dipole being excited, and then a second configuration where there's a plane wave of excitations. And so on the bottom line there in the in the red box, this is where we add the second standard configuration uh, called standard configuration two. In the next uh, pieces of line, we have adding our plane wave uh, excitation. So in the plane wave or in the add plane wave uh, function, you see a 90 and a zero and a zero. So the 90 it refers to the theta angle and the zero refers to the phi angle. So we're, we're creating a plane wave source at 90 degrees theta and zero degrees phi. And also we're adding a complex load to the uh, wire port right on the dipole of 50 ohms uh, uh, with no imaginary component. And so the dipole is not going to be excited in standard configuration two. It's just going to be uh, having a 50 ohm load at its, its port. And because we created another standard configuration, we have to specify the requests again for the second standard configuration, uh, or else we wouldn't see any results before the uh, plane wave source excitation. And so it's just the same uh, uh, far field and current uh, requests being generated. Uh, but you can see on the bottom lines for both the far field and the current requests uh, in uh, quotations standard configuration two. So this is where we specify uh, specific requests to which configuration we want them to be in. And these last two uh, 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 lines of code is the first one is we're saving now these files to a specific uh, file name. And then we're going to be run, uh, uh, running the FICO solver in the background uh, for uh, Compose to uh, run the simulation. Lastly, in Compose, we need to create an OML script in order to uh, run the FICO Lua script that we had modified. So these first two lines of code, uh, the first one is uh, uh, specifying the file path to the CAD FICO executable, and the second uh, line of code is to define the location of the Lua script that, that was modified. This next uh, portion of code just kind of defines the uh, the command prompt that will run FICO remotely, specifically the Lua script that we had generated. We have to define the environment variable in order for Compose to run FICO in the background. The background. And lastly, we run the system command in order to execute the Lua script in FICO. Here quickly are just the results from uh, running the Lua script in, in uh, Compose in the background. So on the left is the first standard configuration where the dipole is being excited and we have the PEC obstacle. So this is the gain of the dipole. On the right is from the standard configuration where the plane wave is being excited and we're seeing the RCS uh, uh, due to the dipole and the uh, PEC box obstacle. Next, I want to go over some uh, uh, deeper automation features with Lua scripting, uh, specifically generating an antenna array. Um, so first, we'll create a dipole antenna using uh, FICO's component library. So the component library includes a lot of different geometries uh, that you can use in your simulations. Uh, in this case, uh, the dipole, uh, you, once when it's imported, it is good to go, ready to be uh, simulated, ready to be uh, simulated. Selecting the dipole from the component library, I'm going to define just the frequency uh, this dipole is built uh, around as 300 megahertz, so the wavelength will be about one meter. Adding the uh, dipole model to the, the simulation, uh, everything is good to go. The, there's a port and excitation defined already on the dipole and also has a uh, far field requests uh, already made. So this uh, model is already ready to go and ready to be simulated. So with this, uh, next we'll go into uh, creating the array. So FICO has a rigorous automated script in order to generate an antenna array based off of, for us, a uh, dipole that we had created. Uh, in the application macro library, we have that genera generate antenna array script. And a useful thing about this script is uh, uh, normally if you would just create a uh, periodic 
array uh, array uh, in the construct tab of FICO, you would have to manually assign ports and excitations to each antenna or each array element that you created. Here uh, in this generate antenna array script, it automatically assigns those ports and excitations. So if you have a huge number of array elements, you will need you you will save a lot of time from having to manually uh, uh, put those ports and define the excitations. So, so selecting that script, uh, first you need to choose the geometry as base element. So in this case, choose the dipole, and you could also select a configuration uh, that you have that you want to uh, specifically generate rate the array uh, based off of. Um, there's different types of arrays that you can uh, uh, generate. Uh, there's the linear planar array, but you could do a custom array as well. Uh, you could specify the number of elements in both X and Y directions. In this case, I just specified 20 elements in both the X and both the X and Y direction. And you could also define an offset along the X or Y axis. So um, the wavelength is one meter. So half a wavelength is 0.5 meters. So I just chose something slightly less than a half a wavelength for this, uh, this simulation. Next, you can define the amplitude uh, type in this script. Uh, you can do uniform, triangular, uh, or you can do a custom uh, amplitude type. Uh, I chose just triangular in this case, uh, but uh, you can apply this amplitude to the x-axis, y-axis, or both x and y-axis, and also define phase difference between uh, array elements. Um, but once you click OK, uh, the uh, script starts generating your array, and it generates it within a matter of seconds. So you can see the array that's generated at the bottom left. And so uh, we had a 20 by 20 array, so about 400, or 400 elements. And you can see that the uh, script, uh, script generated ports and excitations on each array element. So you don't have to, uh, you know, I, I guess 400 elements is a lot of array elements and manually assigning a wire port to each dipole and then assigning a voltage source to each dipole can be very tedious, also very tedious when trying to assign the appropriate amplitude for this array. So this script is very useful in generating all of this for you so you don't have to worry about doing any of the laborious tasks and saves you a lot of uh, runtime just using this script. And uh, you can see the Lua script on the right. The location is located in the program data folder. Um, this is just one uh, script there, but there's uh, many different uh, scripts that's used in the uh, application macro library. Uh, you can open up these scripts and you can modify them yourself or add on to it if desired. Uh, just make sure you save it as a, bit as a new file. So uh, if you want to rerun this uh, script, you, it's not going to, I guess, give you any uh, off results. And lastly, I just want to uh, show the location of where you could find the scripting API reference guide. So if you open up the FICO launcher and go to the documentation tab, you could find the guide in the more guides uh, uh, selection. Um, so this guide has a lot of useful information to help you uh, write your own script. Um, there is a lot of, uh, I guess, like kind of uh, helper code uh, that will kind of, that will guide you through using certain functions in FICO. Uh, that's all there in the, the guide. And it can also be found online at this link here, or feel free to uh, scan this QR code uh, for the, uh, the website. And with that, I want to thank you for your time.